murder in the Gaza Strip. Hello everyone, I'm Wendy Griffith. And I'm George Thomas. An unidentified group kidnapped and executed an employee of Gaza's Palestinian Bible Society. That's right. Rami Ayad, a father of two, died from bullet and knife wounds. Chris Mitchell has the story from Jerusalem. <laughs> Family and friends grieved over Ayad, who leaves behind a pregnant wife and two young children. Ayad served in the teacher's bookshop of Gaza's Palestinian Bible Society. The public relations director told CBN News Ayad was martyred for his faith in Jesus Christ. He described Ayad as the gentlest member of the Bible Society and one who served visitors as Jesus would. Uh, Rami was an evangelical believer, uh, and yet he ministered to Christians of every kind, Orthodox, Catholic, and Baptist in Gaza. And the reality is his loss uh, represents a huge loss for the Christian community there. On Friday, Ayad told friends a car with no license plates had followed him. On Saturday, an unknown group kidnapped Ayad after he closed the Bible Society bookstore. He called his family to tell them he was taken, but expected to return later that evening. However, his body was found in a nearby field Sunday morning. Terrorists have threatened and targeted the Palestinian Bible Society in recent months. In April, a group exploded a bomb outside the Bible Society. The teacher's bookshop, opened in 1999, is the only Christian bookstore in the Gaza Strip. You see, that bookstore was really the center of a, of a uh, community-based ministry that provided computer literacy classes, English classes, as well as support services for about four to 500 families in Gaza City. It was an incredible place of opportunity for reaching out and blessing the community with the love of Jesus Christ. A Hamas spokesman condemned the murder, but the incident raises questions about whether the Hamas-led government can protect the several thousand Christians in the Gaza Strip. It is a, a test for Hamas uh, to see if they can find the killers uh, and to prove that they are uh, about justice in that area. Following the Hamas takeover in the Gaza Strip earlier this year, there's been an increase in incidents against Christians. Ayad's death sends a chill through this small Christian community. The Bible Society spokesman said, please pray for Rami's family, for the team and for all the followers of Christ in Gaza. Please pray for those who think that by killing us, they offer a service to God. May they come to know his love. As it has many times in the history of the church, some are praying that the blood of this martyr will be the seed of the church. And Chris Mitchell joins us uh, from Jerusalem. Hey, Chris, is there any new information of who may have done this and why Rami was tar targeted specifically? Uh, not much new information, George. Uh, in particular, I think uh, it's clear that Rami was killed for his faith. There are some reports in some of the Gaza new newspapers that say that he was uh, killed because of uh, perhaps somebody was trying to steal something. But I think it's clear from... Uh, people that I've talked to that that Rami was very bold and very clear about his faith in Jesus Christ and it was uh, he was a, a genuine martyr. Uh, Chris, how are the Christians in Gaza reacting to to his death? I think they're in shock right now uh, that this is, had, hasn't happened before. There's a lot of fear going on among the Christians in Gaza right now. And uh, I think it's a time, a great time, uh, for people around the world, Christians around the world, to lift them up in prayer. Somebody was telling me just earlier today that they had actually felt lifted up by the prayers of people right after the, uh, after the funeral and during this time of grief that they're going through right now. So I think they're, they're going through shock. There's a sense of fear. It is a very chaotic situation in Gaza right now. So this is a very crucial time to be praying for the, for the Christians in Gaza. You talk about the fear in the Christian community. Has this uh, forced them underground, isolated, or are they coming out into the community and helping the community after, after his death? I think there's a real sense of that they certainly want to help the community. That was the whole purpose of the Palestinian Bible Society that, that Rami was part of. And he, uh, according to the reports, I, I've heard that he was a very loving man, a very big man. He was the face of the Bible Society down there in Gaza. Uh, certainly a sense that they want to reach out. I think there's a tenuous sense right now. Uh, it, this, this period of shock that they're going through is how they respond. But I know many people uh, want to continue the work down there, and they want, uh, they're hoping their prayer is that Rami's death would not be in vain, that it would actually spark a revival. And what impact, I know it's uh, pretty soon, uh, too soon to, to tell, but do you see an impact that, uh, that the gospel could have in, in, in Gaza as well as the region? 
It very, very well might have. I, I know Tertullian, he was a, one of the early church fathers, said that the blood of the martyrs was the seed of the church. And, uh, and I know that's how some people are praying right now, and uh, that they want to reach out with the good news of Jesus Christ. And I know one of the statements made just immediately after the funeral, uh, the death of uh, Rami from the Palestinian Bible Society, is that they wanted to forgive those people who killed him. And they wanted to share the love and the light of Jesus Christ uh, through his death even. And they wanted to, to share that good news. So there's a sense that this could be redeemed, that this could be spark a revival even in Gaza and perhaps even the region. Chris Mitchell, our uh, correspondent in Jerusalem. Chris, always good to see you. Thank you for keeping us up to date on this story. And we have more on the story at our website, including an interview with Rami's pastor and more comments from Open Doors President Carl Muller. You can find all of that at cwnews.org.